Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've been field testing a, a unit here. I've asked to field test this unit and see how it did, give my thoughts on it and try it out and put it through some paces and everything. So, so while I was doing that, I thought I would just shoot the video and, and show some of the stuff that I was doing. And also I want to build this little welding tree positioner here to hold pieces for future videos. Now, check out the contact tip here, where it is in relation to the face of the nozzle. It's recessed back in there over an eighth of an inch, and that's pretty typical with a lot of machines. It's okay for different scenarios, like it's a, it's a compromise between welding really thin stuff and welding really thick stuff. It's not optimum for thick stuff. For welding really thick stuff, you need a short, a short a stick out as possible. So I trimmed this one back to where the contact tip now is slightly protruding past, and that's going to give me a short stick out, a little bit more punch. What happens is a, a too long a stick out, the wire heats up from electrical resistance and makes it wimpy. It just melts off at a different rate and softens up the arc. And it's not what you want for getting the most out of uh, 115 MIG on thicker stuff. So I've got some 3 16 material here. It's a little bit toward the high end. And I'm tacking it up using those little magnets. And I've got the voltage maxed out. The wire feed speed's only set on 7, so I've got more to go on the wire feed speed. And it's okay. And part of the reason it wasn't any hotter than it was, I was plugged into a 30 foot long uh, extension reel only rated for 10 amps. And that's kind of dumb to do that, but people do that kind of thing. If you need to make a weld and all you've got is a extension cord rated for only 10 amps, what are you going to do? You're going to just not, not try it or are you going to give it a try? So, you know, I figured why not? I'll plug it into this 30 foot reel and see what it does. And it's actually doing okay. I was actually very surprised. I thought by now I would kick the breaker, hit the thermal overload on the machine, or just have such a wimpy arc that, that I couldn't even weld anything, but it's not the case. And I'm welding beads just back to back. I'm, I'm going, I'm not even stopping half the time. I'm making a U-turn and, and coming back around without even stopping. That's why the piece is glowing red. I'm trying to push the limits a little bit and seeing if I can kick the thermal overload on it, and I didn't. So that is a good thing. I wound up welding probably a total of about 24 inches without stopping at, at max voltage. And so that kind of told me that, that uh, we're okay here. Now that is not always the case. Sometimes you field test the machine and you have to just give them bad news, which was the case with this one. Same company asked me to test this one months and months ago and it just didn't pass. It appeared to be a well-made machine got nice heavy connectors, brass wing nuts, brass uh, connectors, and, and heavy duty cables, even a Euro style connector where the, the MIG torch plugged into the body down below this. All brass and everything. Looked, it looked nice. Just it would only weld about six inches before it kicked the thermal overload. It did really well using flux core. This is using the uh, in our Lincoln NR211 flux core, self-shielding flux core, it did really well on that, but on bare wire for some reason, it just crapped out after six inches and kicked the thermal overload, and nobody wants that, so uh, it, didn't, it didn't pass. Now, I was doing this little self-shielded flux core uh, bumper, bumper piece, trying to evaluate that machine after it didn't, it didn't uh, make the grade on the bare wire, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I don't know why, but it is what it is. This machine, AHP, was one that is, you know, was, was field tested after that one failed, and it is, it is pretty much doing a whole lot better. It's not having any issues with thermal overload, and I'm able to weld for, like I said, a good two feet. And now I never did kick the thermal overload, and I'm, I'm, I'm on an extension cord. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm building this little welding tree positioner for future videos. I'm going to weld some stuff. Uh, a little series of stuff in the near future, different joints using MIG and stick and, and TIG. And so I'm going to be able to need to hold the, the pieces uh, in vertical position and overhead position and everything. So building a little welding tree here. I'm greasing the, the uh, bolts up with Vaseline. Vaseline makes a pretty good anti-spatter uh, type uh, nozzle dip. And so I figured it would be a really good idea to use instead of never seize or, or whatever on the, uh, on the threads, not only to keep spatter from getting on them just to lube them up so they come out when I'm done. When you weld nuts like this, they're, they're going to shrink a little bit. I welded some stainless nuts a few weeks ago, and, and even with one tack, I could feel them shrinking. Now, carbon steel will not shrink nearly as much, but it's a good idea to leave the bolt in while you weld it and let it cool, 
and that'll keep it from shrinking. And if it's got a little lube on it like this, it'll it'll help it come out and it won't gall or anything like that. So that is why that's the reason for the Vaseline. Now all I could find these these uh, short nipples in was uh, galvanized, zinc coated. So I ground most of that off, and uh, not welding so great, but it's it's not doing bad either. And this is a little third hand tool that I'm using to hold things still while I while I weld them. Sometimes the force of the wire just uh, you know will knock something loose. But you'll notice there hasn't been a misfire on this whole video. Each each light up has been extremely crisp. Sometimes even even pretty good machines will uh, misfire and and you'll get that pop 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 that you know it'll just sputter a little bit before you get started. And you notice I'm wearing a respirator there. That's because of these zinc bolts. It's a 3M 2097 filter cartridge. Those I recommend those because they fit under most welding helmets. And it's got not only a particulate uh, filter, but it's got some uh, layer of charcoal in it too. Gives you some protection for organic vapors. So it's a whole lot better than the just regular paper mask. Whole lot better. And I had to swap over to an old school Huntsman helmet here also because of not only uh, respirator issues, but all, the, all my batteries seem to be dying at once in, in each auto darkening helmet I had laying around. All right. Pull the helmet down with one hand, get started with the other. Takes a little getting used to when you're spoiled for auto darkening helmets. These little magnets, I am... Uh, I never use these much. As long as I've been welding, I never use these little things, but, and I'm a believer now because they're a big time saver on stuff like this. I would normally hold that with one hand, tack it with the other, but it's it's a it's a little small magnet. It's made by Strong Hand Tools, but extremely strong and just extremely handy. Now, a little a little word about these things. What you want to do is use them to get a tack or two. Don't leave them on there while you weld them. It's a good way to smoke the. Uh, the power out of the magnets and you don't want to do that so I'm going to get like just a tack or two and pull the magnet loose and uh, and then weld this thing out another tip here for just uh, just any welding shop whether it's in your garage or whatever a little small drill press vice like this this is a cheap one in fact you don't need a good one at all because you're gonna you don't want to take a chance on on spark getting spatter on threads of a really high-end machinist vise but just for holding parts while you tack and weld them it's extremely handy all right so we'll weld both sides of this thing and then also we're going to use the the magnets again for holding a little tab on onto this uh, galvanized nipple here only reason I got galvanized, they didn't have any black iron inch and a quarter at Home Depot, and they also didn't have any full lengths of inch and a quarter pipe. So I wanted to get this thing done, and I just bought what they had and ground off the uh, quite a bit of the galvanized coating. It's hard to get it all off, but I, I ground most of it off anyway where I was going to weld. So again, I'll use the magnets there. I'll pop one little quick tack in the middle, pull the magnets loose. And we'll weld this side first, and then I won't have to show you. The other side looks just like this side, so we'll just do one side of this thing. Now, again, this is a 115-volt MIG running off a of drop cord, so it is not exactly frying it in there like a big Lincoln Power MIG 350 or a Millermatic 250 or whatever. It's a 115-volt MIG. It's very handy to have around. It, it, it's a very capable machine, but it has its limitations. You know, you're not going to build a 40-foot trailer with one of these, at least not have it be safe. And uh, But you can do a whole lot with a 115-volt MIG, and you can push the limits and get more out of it if you know how to do some things like a little preheat or, or weld vertical uphill to get a little bit more penetration and, and things like that. And also, a much, you know, never use an extension cord whenever you don't have to. That's one main thing, but I'm violating that rule here because I'm, I'm field testing this thing and I want to see what it does under, under certain conditions. So this is the weld tree, and I'm just showing you here how that all goes together. The weight of the whole post is supported on the concrete, and then I can raise and lower and position a piece, a T-joint, a lap joint, a butt joint, whatever height I want to, and position it overhead, and I'm going to be filming those type joints in the near future. 
See, the, the post goes all the way down to the concrete floor, to supports there. This little piece clamps to the edge of the table, and uh, the, the weight of the table and everything will keep it from tipping over. And this piece slides up and down to a comfortable height. And then the, the last piece goes in and out and flips around, swivels, and it'll get at any angle or whatever I want. And also probably I'm going to weld some type of little clamping mechanism onto that little tab there as opposed to just tack welding all the pieces. But either way, we'll work. So again, I'm going to be shooting lots of different training type videos in the near future. And that's what this is for. So if that kind of stuff interests you, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the like button, the thumbs up button that is, and feel free to comment. We will see you right here next week.